New York City author. Before I start, I want to thank Adelaide for having me here and for uh, doing such a fine job with my uh, newest novel, which is called Salt of the Nation. And um, I'm going to briefly tell you what it's about. It, it's, it's because there's not a lot of time, a lot happens in it. Um, it's the story of an ordinary man on an extraordinary journey. And like Cheryl's book, it is also um, a story of contemporary America. When I say contemporary America, I mean what's happening right now at, at this very moment. Um, more specifically, it's the story of a man named Harry McBride, who is a, uh, an American. He works in a gravel plant in New Jersey. And the uh, novel takes place in the run-up to a presidential election. Uh, what kicks off the story is uh, the Republican nominee for the, uh, for, for the presidency he comes to uh, the gravel plant where Harry McBride, our main character, works um, to stage a photo op. Um, and you know, he gives a long-winded speech which interrupts our main character's lunch. Um, and it also interrupts his lunchtime poker game, so he is um, he's irritated. After the speech, the uh, presidential nominee uh, is working his way down the line, shaking hands with the gravel plant workers. When he gets to Harry, Harry impulsively punches him out. Um, the incident gets caught on camera. Um, it instantly goes viral via social media and, and, and on the news. Harry escapes the scene of the crime, and the story takes place during the 19 days when he is on the lam. And he, if you can see here, um, the cover depicts not only the fissure in our country, which the story addresses, the deep divide, but it is also follows the route that our main character, Harry, takes from Hackettstown, New Jersey, all the way down to the Mexican border. Um, and it's not just a road story. This, what happens is in the, in the short 19-day period that Harry's on the lam, um, he's being pursued across the country by a, a zealous private detective who has um, racial and, and sexual issues. He's being taunted via the radio airwaves by a hyperbolic uh, radio host similar to uh, Rush Limbaugh. Um, and in this course of a very, very brief amount of time, Harry becomes a, uh, a national hero uh, to some, and others he becomes a villain. And, and um, every segment of society seems to project onto Harry something that they are missing in their own lives. And um, you know, an example is you know, a, a many men wish to, uh, to be him, or at least be with him while on his cool road trip journey across the country. Um, many women are intrigued by him in different ways. Um, a young mother believes that Harry can heal her sick son. And um, college professors start teaching ad hoc courses on, on Harry McBride. Uh, the number one song in the nation is about Harry McBride. Um, you have the Harry McBride, Harry McBride Society gets set up hastily to cash in on the free-floating rage that, that Harry has given a, a face and a name to. Um, and and they, there was even radio stations staging Harry McBride punch-out contests to um, raise money for the troops. So, you know, Harry becomes something for everybody. Um, in the meantime, he's a very simple man. He's not a political actor. He doesn't have much political leanings one way or the other. Um, so, you know, the hopes and dreams and fears of the nation are projected onto this man um, who is not only in physical pain from, you know, from the punch, his hand is swollen, uh, but, you know, his back is chronically uh, in pain from working 20 years in the gravel pit. Um, but, um, you know, what started out when I first started writing this book as somewhat of a satire. Uh, unfortunately, the current events have caught up to it and, and, and tipped the balance from satire more heavily towards the side of, of reality. Um, and I, you know, this, this, my goal with this book is to write about what's going on, like I said before, in this country right now, to capture it all in 200 pages. And um, 
So that is salt of the nation.